Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast. All the stuff we did not get to during the course of the show today. Uh, a little bit of a faster cast. I apologize. We have Jason Roy uh, coming in, and he uh, is the founder of Building 429, which I don't think is really doing much anymore. Uh, but he's still writing and producing and stuff. And his daughter, uh, Haven, is on American Idol. And the last I had heard, she had still made it through all of her rounds, like made it through Hollywood Week and stuff. So that's a huge deal for she her. She sounds good. Yeah. Like, I, I like her. And I want to, I kind of want to have him on to talk about like what it's like to be a dad you know when your child's going through this and like some of the fears you have too because I mean you put yourself up for public criticism and it can be brutal you know and so like kind of what does that look like and how Mm -hmm. she's doing and then we're going to have fun with him Uh, we're going to have him audition for us and we're going to play the judges and see uh, (laughs) how that goes a lot of fun Uh, All right, so here's some of the stuff going on today this is a, a really interesting thing out of Indiana Their schools may be soon required to notify parents if their children request a name change or a pronoun change at school. Wait, what? Okay. So say you have a kid that's going to school and and they tell their teacher, I don't want to be called Sarah anymore. I want to be called Sam, and mm-hmm. uh, I identify as a boy now, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, or if it's, if it's subtle, like a pronoun change, like I, we, they, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So now there is a uh, thing that is they're putting it before the legislator that the parents would be required to be notified of this, which I think All is the great. Parents. Yeah, no, the parents of that child. Oh, so like because how many times do you like your kids, especially they get older when they go to college, you're not allowed to know anything about your kids, mm-hmm. and then they they cite all these laws of privacy and stuff. But like how many times like there you have adults that are like, I have to protect this child and their identity, and what's going to happen to them if their parents find out? Well, it's their parents' business to find out. It's not yours. Mm-hmm. It's their parents' job to guide them and love them and help them. And so um, this I think is a good thing because it alerts so far. if their kid was acting out in school they would for sure call the parent and go hey I think something's wrong your kid's withdrawn or whatever they would call them and so this is another warning sign of I will call it a problem whereas other people who are uh, like super gender affirming and want everyone to just do whatever they want to do would be like no this is a pro- this this is not a problem it's it's part of the growing process and it's not well I would think even if you were a person that was for letting a child choose their gender. Right. I would think that you would be for this, making sure that the kid that the parents know because I mean I would think that it would just add on to more and more trauma if you don't have a good relationship with your parents. But they don't want that because they don't want the parents to know because this way they can affirm the child without the parent having a say so because the parent might try to stop them, which is the last thing a Mm -hmm. lot of these people want. Because they're like, let your kids be whatever gender they want. That's the true them. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's crazy. So they don't want parents to know this stuff because they're like afraid of what if they do this, it'll out the child and then they'll have problems at home. And so I know that for some of these people, they think they're doing what's best, but it's not. It's not true. I saw a TikTok video of this one lady. It's lunacy. This lady was like, um, and so my son or my child was assigned s- male at birth, but around 18 months old, we started realizing that something was different. And now she is, and she kept going, she, she, mm-hmm. she, at two years old, she liked to play dress up. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and you're like, wait a minute. So you are basically letting a two-year-old decide their gender because they like to play dress up. Kids do that kind of stuff. And this is a woke mom that wants to have a trans kid so she can feel better about her parenting. Yeah, that's like for her. Yeah, like this is is her Super Bowl. Look, I'm such a good mom. I'm going to let my kid do whatever they want, which is lunacy. And so their final test of, 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 again, of, of Taking a child's gender and allowing their gender to change, their final test was, uh, my husband uh, coaches T-ball, and when we put her out there, she didn't like it at all. So, okay, so this is your scientific thing of uh, didn't like T-ball. There are guys that don't like T-ball, mm-hmm. you know? Like, come on, man. I, I, they put me out to play football, and I didn't like it. But so, that's because I was 5'6", and yeah, <laughs> getting tackled by 280-pound so dudes. Yeah, they were like 16, and should have not. they were held back 20 grades, yeah. you know? <laughs> no, but I mean, Like, this is the level and the craziness at which we've gotten to in this world. And I I started, I haven't seen the whole thing. I know Betty has seen it, that Matt Walsh thing, What is a Woman? Mm -hmm. And it is mind-boggling what people say in that the clips that I've seen from that. Like, you thought it was well done, though, right? I 
it was definitely enlightening because Matt sits down with people that uh, do identify as different genders. Some identify as animals. Um, and then he also talks to a child psychologist, um, a college professor mm-hmm. about all of these things. Um, Identifying it as an animal seems fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, that's fun. Yeah. Why not? I, there was even one person that he talked to and this person um, had changed their gender and then realized that they had made a mistake. Uh, and also uh that would be bad. Yeah, and and said that they wish that someone had told them they shouldn't have done this. Um but also was pointing out that we don't know the kind of health issues that can come from um, giving children these hormone supplements yeah, right, right. that can change their gender. We don't know. Those are gonna have long ramifications. Um that they could be paying for for the rest of their life, and they made that choice as a child. Yeah, and as a child, you're not prepared to make any kind of big no. choice. I mean, that's well, why we don't let kids drive, vote. Yeah, you, you know, don't, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, it, it, I don't understand how they can choose a gender, but they can't choose to drive. Right. Yeah, we should let them vote for president at 18. If you or at eight, if you can decide your gender, you should certainly be allowed to vote for president. You know, let let, let all the trans kids vote. How about that? Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things, man. Like. <laughs> Uh, I, I, the most interesting one of that thing that I saw was this one person who has not medically changed, but is transgender and identifies as a woman. And he goes, how do you know you're a woman? He kept asking, how do you know that you're, as I hurt him, kept asking him, how do you know that you're a woman? And this person kept saying, it's because I listened to a thing on YouTube and uh, these other women were affirming me. And all these people were not speaking truth. They were speaking agenda into this person's life. And this person was like, yes, so that's how I know I'm a woman. Not biologically, not everything. They know because other people told them. And you're like, what in the world? And that's the same argument that people that are pro-gender things use to say, well, you're indoctrinating your kid to be male if they if they were assigned male at birth. You're just indoctrinating them to be that. Well, that's the same exact thing that's happening on the other side. You're indoctrinating people and children to think that they can be this different gender. It's lunacy, and we you know, buy into it. I think, to me, it's just sad that there are children that need to be led, and while there are some people parents that think that they are leading right but in, in in reality to me it's more of a confusion yeah it's not it's one of those things like the identifying thing is the thing that really bugs me because like for example my friend i gave him a window he's building a thing and the window needs to go into this slot okay so it's got to be the right size and so i had just quickly measured it because i didn't know he was going to frame it out yet and and he goes he goes yeah so if your measurements were right i'm like yeah it's like it's it's uh 46 inches and i i said i I took it quick but you know what if it doesn't fit just tell the window to identify as 47 and then it's the frame is going to have to accept it like and I know that sounds stupid, but that is literally what we're doing with people. Literally, we're taking hard, absolute facts and we're saying, just set all that aside and don't worry about it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. And just do this, you know, and that would not help that window get in that frame. And it doesn't help that person when you don't speak truth. You got to do it in love, but you got to be able to speak truth. And we can't speak truth today because you're a narrow minded bigot if you do. I was watching this thing. It was about this man that was talking about how there are so many people that are passionate these days about the things that they stand for. You know, you see, you hear people talking about climate change, um, Anything, gen- yeah. gender roles, like everything. And pretty much what he was saying is that we've lost um, a lot of people don't know what their purpose is in life. Sure. And so they don't find it in God. They find their purpose in Something that they can believe in, something that they can see. Some sort of activist thing. Yes. And so they will stand by it regardless of what the facts say, because Mm -hmm. it is what has given them purpose. Yeah. And if you're saying that those things don't matter or they don't exist. Take it away. Then you're taking away their purpose. Absolutely. So they will do everything they can to fight for these things, even if it doesn't make sense to you. Because 
it's a life or death situation for them, whereas it might not be for us because that's not what we we find our identity in. Right. Because if your identity is in Christ, then the other things don't like mm-hmm. they can come and go. Other things can come and go and it doesn't matter. You're mm-hmm. absolutely right. I think that's a really good point because you're all in on something. And if it's not true, then everything you are is not true. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what the inference is. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. This was kind of cool. There was a Nebraska church that raised five hundred and twenty thousand dollars to pay off off the medical bills of people in its neighborhood. They started it off as like a 14-month campaign, and the idea was to do things nice for the neighbors and fill their gas tanks and all that stuff, and just be the church and love people. Like, I love this. I think this is so good. And then they found out that you could buy basically like commodities, you could buy people's medical debt, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Like hmm. your medical debt gets traded to different companies and then they go after you to That's pay weird. it. And so I know it is. And so uh, they had an estimated 10,000 people contribute to this fund. And what they did was they bought up this debt and they paid off $520,000 worth ton- of medical debt for people. And that and was it, two people. What's yeah? <laughs> it was four. It was ten thousand people that got involved. But it goes to show you that's, awesome. that's fifty two dollars a person on average. Mm-hmm. And so that many people oh, yeah. doing a little made a huge difference. And by buying up the medical debt, they like you're just absolving the debt versus if you gave them money, then they would have to be taxed on it. And this avoids the tax as well. It just takes the debt and wipes it away. I mean, like what Jesus did for us, it took our debt, wiped it away, and now it's clean. And I just, I I think that's so cool because a lot of times we talk about how the church gets it wrong or there, you know, there's this perception that the church is narrow-minded or bigoted or, you know, racist or biased or whatever. But it's like when you see stuff like this, you're like, man, that's it. That's the way you do this. That's how you live out love uh, to people and how you live out your faith. I think it's awesome to see that the church is stepping up and helping with these medical bills. I think it's easy for us to help when someone approaches us and says, look, you can help all these people if you just pay $52. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, what is $52 to Mm -hmm. most people? What is that? That's easy to do. Um, But going back to the whole gender and all this stuff and then the the shootings and things like this, you find one of the common things is that like the sh- the shooter situations, those are people that are loners and they have a hard time fitting in. They don't really have friends. Maybe they have one and they've never felt like they fit in. I think that is a greater problem, a bigger problem for the church to solve. Not that it can't be done. Anything can be done with God's help. But in that situation, I think it's going to be more about a relationship than just throwing money at mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. While that is a great thing that they did, like the $52 that piles up and it helps someone. I wish it was as simple as that in helping people with their mental health or finding Mm. some way that they could fit in. It's interesting. But it becomes more of a relationship issue than it does a money issue. It's interesting you bring that up because they said their next thing that they're going to tackle is the ongoing mental health crisis and they're going to try to find a way to help people with that because it is so important. Well, and another thing, I think we've talked about this before, I would love to see, especially when we found out, except for the Nashville one, it depends on where you look at it. I don't even know anymore, but all the shooters, most shooters are male. Mm -hmm. And so we have talked about, um, there was a school somewhere, I forget now where it was, but there was a bunch of dads that got together and they stayed out in the hallways. They talked to these kids and they saw the violence in that school drastically go down. I would love to see men, just leaders show these boys that you do matter and that you do have a purpose, but it's going to take these men stepping up in a big way. The dad's stepping up and right. saying, hey, I see you. You are valued. Do you need to talk to someone? Right. I'm right here. I would love to see more schools do that. I would love to see dads step up in a big way. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that uh, we've had a breakdown in, in family, and I've said this for years, like that that is a big cause of our ilks because guys don't have good dad role models a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And that's where it starts young, you know, and so doing having dads involved in schools when kids are really young is probably a great thing you know right. long term and, and even if you don't agree like i know a lot of times as men you're probably told you shouldn't cry like you don't need to right. be a burden to your your friends or whatever we're going to have to put that aside because there are younger generations that are caught up in their feelings. That's what the world is telling them, yeah. that your feelings are what you need to lead your life by. And sometimes your feelings just get in the way and complicate things. But if you have the older generation stepping in and saying, listen, I'm not going to 
say that those aren't valid because I want you to tell me about those feelings, but also let me share with you my experience of my my life experience and how that can help you. Mm-hmm. I think that would make a world of difference. Yeah, mentoring like teenage guys too is a, probably a really good thing. Yeah, but it's just going to take. It's going to take, and I mean, the, and I and I would say too, like there are many polls out there that say women are better at being emotional or going to church and having a closer relationship with Jesus than men are. And maybe that's because you're not as emotional as right. women are. But it's going to take something, a big movement in the men department, because I think women could do all they want. They can feed into them. and all, But boys need men. Right. They need dads. They need someone that they can look up to. Mm. They don't need another woman to look up to them. Right. Or look up to. Too, right. Like, it's going to take men. I don't know what age. It's, I don't know if it's going to be singles, dads, whatever. But somebody just stepping up and making a movement in the schools, making sure that p- kids are seen because they don't feel valued. And I think social media has made it even worse by making bullying something that travels with you, even when you go home. Right. And like you said, a breakdown in relationships. Yeah. It's sad that marriage really isn't a thing anymore. Like kids are 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 a product of of just like they're in single home um like a single mom raising them and so if they have a dad or a dad figure that they can look up to i think that would make a difference i had a cool thing the other day uh there was this kid that went to my daughter's school and he was that outcast kid you know no one got him he was kind of a, a an odd duck you know and mm-hmm. i always felt for this kid and i always treated him with like super kindness and you know talked to him about jesus and tried to you know be a good example mm-hmm. for him where our, when our paths crossed and things like that and so then um I, he, I go to this pizza place we love and turns out, and I've been going there for a couple of years, he works there. Mm-hmm. And so I go in and I'll still talk to him. Hey, how you doing, man? It's good to see you. How you doing? And I ask him about, all about his life that he's got going on and the things he loves. And we talk about his tattoos and stuff. And uh, it was so funny the other day. I go in and uh, and he goes, hey, I'm like, hey, dude, it's good to see you. Doing all right? Yeah. And we're talking about tattoos. And he goes, um, I got it. I, I just, oh, I'm so nervous. I guess he goes, I don't know why I'm so nervous. Um, I'm so nervous. I'm like, it's all right, dude. What's going on? He goes, he goes, well, um, uh, I became a Christian. And you're like, oh my right. gosh. I'm like, dude, that's so great. He's like, yeah, me and my girlfriend, we're going to church now and like all this stuff. And I'm like, that is so cool, man. And it was just, it was cool to see this kid that didn't have a place find a place, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know? And, and so I'd love to know who it was that kind of, you know, had an impact on him mm-hmm. now that, that kind of pushed the ball over the goal line, you right. know, kind of But thing. you've always had a, a, a not, I wouldn't say a weakness, but a pull, a heart for, a heart for yeah. the uh, underdog, the for one sure. that just kind of doesn't really belong, doesn't really fit in. And I think it would take a lot of yous <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, to have that heart, right. I would love to see more men that have a heart for boys that are in that situation because all it takes is that as one. Right. Seeing them, valuing them, and knowing that they're always available to talk to if they're going through a rough time. And you don't have to be the person that necessarily is the one that brings them to Christ. You know, no. like for me, it was like just lay some groundwork, try to be a good example, and then somebody else gets that that moment where they connect with them and click with them, and God's working on them, and it, and it and it all comes, all of it comes to fruition. I think it's great. Like I was so happy for this kid. It was like a cool moment for me uh, to you know kind of hear him be nervous about telling me and stuff you know but i get it because these guys are like okay i'm, I'm a christian you know and you right. you, you know you want to be cool or whatever but, yeah um but it was, i think it was that because you mentioned like you know church i think church is a really good place to start in terms of finding ways to have like an impact on yeah. youth and to have an yeah, impact you're on doing like, it like, teenage good boys for you. because i don't 100 percent know how things work in terms of being able to get involved at like schools, especially right. like public schools, private schools, I think they make it sound like it's easier to get involved in private schools, but public schools get weird about certain things. But like church is a place where like nobody's going to look at you and be like, oh, that's weird that you they want you serve to serve with kids. Because right. kind of like you're saying, like teenagers are all teenagers and young kids are like at that point in their life when they are looking for purpose and they're basically like testing purposes too. And if you can make church and faith look like the best purpose right. for those kids, then that's going to be well, really well set up for them to hopefully go to their schools and seek to be 
good impacts at school as well. And if you don't do it, they'll find another purpose. Right. And it could be a negative one. Right. Yeah. You yeah, know? I love that, Gavin, you uh, do that. And, and it's like, so Gavin is having an impact on these kids and uh, Hopefully. they're super emotional and he's a little emotional. And I'm trying to have an impact on Gavin to be less emotional. <laughs> and Sometimes uh, it works. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I mean, I, it's a good thing. Like I used to teach 11th grade Sunday school, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it, it, yeah, I wanted to have that kind of an impact. And so I love that you're doing that. I, I, I mad respect for that, man, too. All that to say, if you... Uh, uh, are a dad or a grandpa or I don't know just like think about what are those ways that you could reach out to the boys in mm -hmm. your life because I think the girls we're way more emotional we have mm -hmm. way more mm -hmm. less angst mm -hmm. you said you're more emotional we are but have less angst but, no I don't know about but, that but I we don't find saying. enjoyment violence okay yes yeah, we don't right. find enjoyment in playing video games where you shoot someone right the value of life has gone out the window like right. no one is seen as um made in the image of God that is not that is not valued it's not seen anymore mm -hmm. so all I'm saying is if you're if you're in a church, if you're wherever, if you work in a school, like look at those boys and really make sure that they're seen and heard because who knows? I mean, they're going to find they're going to find purpose. They're going to find enjoyment in something else. And it may be you that makes the difference yeah. in their life. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, we have a choice. Uh, we're running a little bit late. What do you got? Uh, I got one that could get you on a soapbox, so maybe we we can save it for tomorrow. Hold it for tomorrow, yeah, I, yeah. I feel soapboxy uh, tomorrow. I'll be soapboxy tomorrow. <laughs> I feel soapboxy yeah. tomorrow. I will. I know. I know in advance. I'm going to feel that way. Okay, we've got one birthday. All right, what do you got? This is from Aston, celebrating a birthday today. I'm a daycare teacher, but hoping to have the day off. Oh, I hope you got the day off. I was a daycare teacher too. It is a calling. It's not easy, absolutely. <laughs> and just like the world, like the world needs the men to step up, we do need the daycare people. Yeah, that is we true. Need, you are needed. That is true. Valued. Uh, question: What do you love to do in your free time? Ooh, easy. Wally, go. Uh, I like woodworking. Uh, he likes to stay busy. I do. You I, do not like to stay. He stagnant. doesn't like to have no. quote unquote free time. No, I don't. Like I like pickleball, uh, motorcycle riding, mountain biking, e foiling. Uh, uh, oh, did you get your info stuff. yet? Not yet. Oh. It didn't come in yet. So I'm still waiting. But yeah, so I like I like active stuff. Mm -hmm. My wife wants to hike though, and I'm like, I've watched oh, you try to walk. Uh, you're like, I'm afraid of you falling. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I, we ha we're not tackling hiking yet. But <laughs> Lady Rock. Uh, I like to um, puzzle. I like to puzzle. I like to watch Duck Dynasty. I'm back in Are Duck you? Dynasty. She's back on a Duck love Dynasty it. tear. Yeah. Love it. I used to love it. You I'm back Cy on it. earlier today. Love Cy. Like, Why is she if talking I could about be Cy's best friend, I would no I would take way. it up in a heartbeat for sure. Um Did I tell you, ever tell you I went to a, a Duck Dynasty Christmas party? Did you really? When did? I was in Louisiana. Oh. Big stuff out there. Oh, I'm sure. I didn't wear a camo and I was so out of place. <laughs> but you had the beard. Oh yeah, <laughs> not neat. They had a Duck Dynasty cruise. I like. I would have oh paid money goodness. to, to see the great. people just, just to, to go. The people duck. watch. Oh, was so good. So good. Um, I also like to eat, mm -hmm. and um, I like to read my books. Yeah, and sleep, and hang out with my friends. Yeah. But always back to eating. Absolutely. Nice. <laughs> and sleep. Yes. Yeah. Nap. I know. I know you like the nap. I'm like a cat. I called her yesterday, and I and it always goes to voicemail if it's around three in the afternoon, <laughs> two or three. I know what she's doing, but I needed some information. I do not. I, I don't have to pick up the phone. She got, and, and her phone. Like if I call her, what? Well, no, you always have to. If, if, I if, always do. Yeah, you do. I'm and you did. The right. You did yesterday. Uh, no, but she'll. If I call her phone and it goes to voicemail. She has it set on Do Not Disturb. If I call it again because I'm on her list, it will ring for her. Mm -hmm. But I respect that, and I yeah. and I did not call you. And she called me later. She's like, "Hello, why are you leave Wally?" Okay, but listen. <laughs> here's the funny part. Here's the funny part. I was not napping. Oh, you weren't. You I went out on a That's walk. Waste. Oh, really? Yeah. My roommate and I we went out on a walk, nice. and I saw. I put it on our stories. I saw a robot lawnmower. It was mm. the weirdest thing. Yeah. It was not doing a good job. Those things don't look. 
like they work well. Super yeah. bougie. Yeah, I got to mow my lawn today. I like mow. I like oh. mowing my lawn now because I have a riding lawnmower oh, for my <laughs> tiny lawn, but it's so great. <laughs> Makes all I have the to difference. like. I have to like make circle like turns and then back up and do like four point turns at one point, you know. But it's like it's so great. Mm. Uh, Gavin. Uh, Easy. It's just golf right now. Yeah, you are all in golf, on the golf. Golf and some reading here and yeah. there. So yeah. that's that's genuinely it right now. Yeah, my uh, pastor at small group asked me if I was going to play in the church golf oh, yeah. league because Gavin and I go to the same church. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should play in the golf league. I probably will. You will like it. I, I think they're already doing sign up, so you need to look oh, into. Maybe. Yeah, do you, I, you need it to cost look money? into money. Oh yeah, you got to pay thirty one dollars a week. Gotcha. Which, you don't have to. You do. don't pay in advance, and you don't have to play every oh, week. That's nice. Yeah, so if you have weeks you don't want to play, you don't have to play. Um, but you're in, and so yeah, I think it's like thirty one, and it's a nice sign course. Up. Yeah, I'll yeah. Sign up. So you should definitely do that. I think you'll like it. The guys are cool, and it's scramble for. Format, so sure. it's fun. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. I think that's going to do it for yep. our aftercast today. And as always, thanks for being a potty.